welcome to Nico Props. And in this episode, we are going to be making these fantastic eyes in a jar. So this is uh, very simply done with a couple of fake eyes, a bit of uh, oil, and um, and a bit of creativity. So to start off with, you need a little jar. Uh, some of these fake eyes I got off of Amazon. I had them kicking around in the cupboard and I had two different colours. Uh, a bit of red wool, maybe some different colours of red wool, oil and a laser printout of your label. It's important it's laser because otherwise it will smudge if it is inkjet. So uh, just playing around with the eyes, trying to see if they're going to fit inside. And I think actually what I need to do is I need to cut off some of this um, wool here put it on there maybe kind of untwist it flick it out a bit so that it kind of spools around like hair in in the uh, in the jar the idea being it's i want it to look a bit like capillaries that kind of thing that you would get you know those fine tissues and sinews and things that you get in an eye uh, we've all seen eyes being ripped out on films they look awesome so uh, that's the idea i want some of it to clump some of it to kind of spray out so it's just kind of peeling it apart i'm hoping that some of it are just chunked together naturally um, just working in those pieces there and trim it off some excess I don't want it all to be the same length that's another another trick as well you don't want everything to be uniform and then some of the bits that uh, are hanging around I just chucked in the jar and maybe split open because they're just going to add to the effect done Bit more fiddling around here it's important that you're happy with how it is. Um, I didn't realise when I when I uh, recorded this how uh, how far it went, um, and it was how much time I'd actually spent fluffing these up. Actually, to be fair, so uh, it's fa it's fairly easy though to do. Is that you get involved and you think, yeah, that's going to look amazing and this is going to look great. Um, I'm hoping on this one, I've uh, having had the experience in the first one, I've kind of did this one a little bit quicker. Let's see what happens. But the, uh, the label, going back to the label that I said about when you're going to print the label out, um, because we're going to be uh, staining this and trying to age it with, um, well, coffee effectively, um, it, uh, it's going to make normal inkjet ink run, uh, which wouldn't have happened uh, back in the day. This is supposed to be sort of a, I don't know, a Victorian era, if you would imagine. So they they would have had typewriters and that kind of thing i don't think the the ink would have run in the same way and you would certainly would have ended up with the same color patterns from the ink coming out into the paper so laser for this kind of thing is the way to go oh and by the way laser jet quite often is just basically an ink jet no doubt somebody will come and correct me on that as well So just getting the loads, last little bits of, uh, of fluff in there. If we put the oil in now, basically up until a reasonable level, we don't want it all the way to the top, so we've still got to squeeze that, that lid in. It's probably going to give some overspill anyway. Um, but also we want a bit of air in there, just like, because it's going to look good. Um, I picked out some flocking that I had in the cupboard. You can get this from model makers and things like that. People that, make, uh, that do railway um, kits and that kind of thing. So I've got lots of different colours of flock and I thought oh, I'll just put a couple of pinches of that in see if that makes any difference. Honestly, I didn't notice much difference, so you could probably skip that step. You're probably better off with a, a couple of different colours of wool actually, um, and maybe even sort of a bit of pea, um, silicon pipe or something in there just to kind of fill in a lot of really, really thin stuff to simulate like bits of fat and vessels and stuff. So just wipe down the bottle to get rid of all that oil and we are now on to the label side of things so we're going to cut out this label here this is just normal a4 paper uh, if you're in america you probably have call it letter size i'm not worrying too much about it i'm deliberately scrimp crumpling it up getting fingerprint marks on it that kind of thing i want it to look a bit battered i don't want it to look good it shouldn't look new this is a basic spray mount. Uh, it's a permanent ad ad adhesive. Actually, I think this one's a permanent, semi-permanent, something like that. Anyway, you can get a permanent one. It's just a spray adhesive, basically, uh, for mounting paper and paper boards and things. And I use it for making stickers and that kind of thing. So stick it to the bottle. 
you know, it's repositional for, for a little while and then eventually it will just kind of go off and you won't be able to do that anymore. So now we're on to uh, the aging side of things. I'm deliberately kind of rubbing it and trying to damage the paper a bit, rub it with a bit of with tissue, um, it's a shop towel because that's going to be a bit more uh, um, sort of rougher as well than my fingers are. So that might take some off in an interesting way, but not too much. Peeled up the label there as well by accident, you know, jab it with the back of the brush, you know, just, just damage that paper a bit. So it looks like it's been through, you know, a few moves and that kind of thing. And by doing that, when we put this um, uh, this on, this is uh, basically, a, um, I made up some, got some instant coffee, like a teaspoon of instant coffee and a small espresso cup. And uh, and basically, yeah, just, just puts hot water in that. And then I'm dabbing it on here and there, just kind of to try and give it an uneven coat and try to get it soaking more in some places than others. Um, and then uh, basically at this point, it's probably a good idea to crack out the hairdryer um, and start drying this off with the, uh, with the hairdryer. Because what this is gonna do is gonna allow us then to build up on the coffee without it kind of all becoming one uniform color. We can let it dry and we can then re-soak and we can get like a double ring effect into that label you know like some moisture's got into the air and it has got into it that kind of thing and i find coffee better for this than tea um tea i find that's actually strangely really good for garments and cotton based stuff um but um coffee seems to be the way to go from for the majority of actual paper labels um back in the day when you were at school you used to make that kind of treasure map or whatever uh, i don't know if you guys have experienced this um or i'm just reminiscing about my own childhood but uh we always used to use tea and it worked quite well and then you'd hit it up with like a lighter and stuff and burn the edges and you know that would be your aging effect but that's as far as the aging ever got you know it's a school based aging effect so so yeah hitting up with the uh the hair dryer again i mean because i've made it so wet i've actually you know reactivated the glue underneath i'm hoping there's enough glue still left um, once it dries out a bit more to uh, keep the label on there we are that looks like we are pretty much finished here basically so uh, let's go in for a, a closer inspection on that just clean up my hands first obviously that's very important get rid of all the oil oh look levels come off again oh dear but again just kind of squidge it back on hope for the best let it set it's ripped a bit but that's kind of good i like that i like the fact that it's ripped Hit up the hairdryer one more time before I, uh, I scooch off. So this is the final result. The, uh, the jar is looking good. I love the fact that we got some thick bits, some thin bits, and we got some other bits that are going on in there. Um, and uh, yeah, so uh, if you like this, like, subscribe, 